Hey guys, I'm Sina. Welcome to another video. Uh, today is Monday, August 26, and we are going to talk about the Jackson Hole meeting that was held on Friday, Federal Reserve rate cuts, uh, recession risks, the SOM rule, and what the market is likely to do in the next few months. I'm recording from my office today, and I don't have my, my, my external microphone, so hopefully the, the audio wouldn't be bad, but let's get into it. So I want to give you an update on, on the Federal Reserve rate cuts and the trajectory of the stock market and the labor market. So the Fed is cutting. We finally got the confirmation on Friday in the Jackson Hole meeting that the Fed essentially uh, committed to a beginning of a rate hike cycle. And this is this is very significant. And uh, let's talk about what that means. So first, let's take a look at where we are. You see that the Fed funds rate is at 5.25 at the moment, but let's look at the, his the recent history of the rate cuts. Uh, before COVID, we were at about 2%, and as soon as the crisis happened, the Fed reacted to it with, with very rapid rate cuts all the way down to zero, and they kept the zero interest rate policy for a pretty long time, up to the middle of the 2022. And during this time, a lot of uh, negative economic con consequences emerged. Everyone and their grandmother turned into a speculator. Everything uh, was in a bubble. And the Fed let it go on for a really long time until inflation surprised them big time. And they began hiking rates in the middle of 2022. You can see that they've, they moved up step by step, sometimes two points, and they slowed down at the end. And by August 2023, we reached the top and we've been there for a full year. Now the Fed has committed to cutting the rate. It's important to realize that this was the fastest rate hike cycle in decades. Uh, if you compare that to 2008, for example, the, the pace at which we we got to more than 5% was much slower and we were starting from a higher pace. So many people have been worried about the consequences of such an unprecedented rate high campaign. But what got the Fed to pivot uh, primarily was the inflation data. So here we have the CPI, Consumer Price Index uh, data. You see that the index have been, has been hovering around uh, two and a half for quite some time after 2008 crash. It's been kind of there up and down. After COVID, it dropped to zero. So it didn't even get into the deflationary phase. But the Fed uh, panicked and they began pumping the markets. And of course, that caused uh, inflation everywhere and anywhere. So that we, we got an initial bump and then another explosion and then another explosion, which got us to 9.1% in June 2022, a massive number by any historical standards. And after they began hiking the rates and as the markets began healing themselves, the recent reading in July 2022 was 2.9%. So we finally dropped below 3% and we have a two in the beginning of that number. So that gives the Fed some cover and some confidence. We can also look at the core CPI. This is uh, the same thing, excluding food and energy, which add a lot more volatility. So core CPI tends to be a lot more stable. And, and you can see this has been hovering around two historically. And after COVID, it dropped to uh, slightly above one and then jumped back up to 6.6 uh, .6 in a few steps in September 22. And uh, from there, it began declining. And the recent reading is 3.2%. And what the Fed is saying that they think this downtrend uh, is likely to continue as as we've seen in the recent months and will get us down to 2%. What is magical about 2%? No one knows, they don't know, we don't know, but it's just a number that they've historically tried to achieve. <clears throat> so on Friday in the Jackson Hole meeting, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, Jay Powell, made a speech and he made it very clear that the Fed is planning rate cuts for the future. I've summarized the, the key points of the speech in these three sentences. First one, he says, my confidence has grown that inflation is sustainably on its path to 2%. So essentially, this chart that we saw showing that inflation is reducing, the, the Federal Reserve thinks that this reduction is sustainable and it's going to continue to go on and bring inflation down to their 2% target. The second thing he said was the time has come for policy to adjust, meaning 
we are going to change and pivot and begin a rate cut cycle. Uh, it's as clear as it can be. And then the third thing I said is the timing and pace of rate cuts will depend on incoming data. So cuts are guaranteed, but but we may cut uh, 25 basic basis points, or we may cut more depending on what the data says, or we might actually take a pause if inflation surges again. But the cutting cycle has begun nevertheless. And on this chart, you can see the market expectations of the Fed funds rate in future. So the light blue columns show what the market was expecting last month, and the darker blue shows what the market is expecting right now. Uh, essentially, what happened is that the, the, the probability of one rate cut, uh, which basically gets us from 525 to 500 basis points, uh, has gone down from 90% to uh, slightly below 80% and, and has shifted to two rate cuts, essentially bringing us down to 475 for Fed fund rate, essentially the market got a lot more aggressive in, in pricing rate cuts after Powell's speech, but the market is predicting 100% a likelihood of a cut with about an 80% chance of one rate cut and 20% chance of two rate cuts. So as we discussed, this slowdown in inflation coupled with uh, some of the weakness that we see in the labor market pushed the Fed to begin a rate cut cycle. But the big question is whether these rate cuts are bullish and they will cause asset markets to grow. And is it time to go all in or is there reason to be more conservative? The first thing to note that in theory, yes, they are bullish. Uh, one way to think about it is in the framework of capital asset pricing model, the cap, the famous cap and model. Uh, this model makes it clear that when rates go down, the attractiveness of other equities and other investments go up. So this model essentially gives us the cost of equity, which is essentially the minimum return that you should be looking for in an asset. And it begins with a risk-free rate of return. And then uh, that's the minimum thing you're looking for in any asset. If, if, if an investment returns less than the risk-free rate, uh, it's no good. And you add on top of it a beta times a risk premium, which is the market rate of return RM minus the risk-free return. So a, a, a multiplier of the risk, uh, so a multiplier of the equity risk premium is added on top of it. Essentially, to simplify this, you're looking for an investment that gives you the uh, risk-free rate of return plus some premium. But the point is. If the rates are going higher, the cost of investing in that equity goes higher. So it gets less and less attractive and you see money moving back into cash and government bonds. But as the rates go down, investing in that those kind of instruments becomes less attractive and investing in any other asset, including the stock market, becomes more attractive. So in theory, rate cuts should be bullish. But this theory doesn't match uh, our empirical observation. As you can see in this chart, the majority of the declines in the stock market came after the Fed began cutting rates. So, for example, they pivoted in 2007 and then crash happened after that. They pivoted in 2000 and the crash uh, and a significant crash happened after that. And so on in 1981, they began another rate cut cycle right before the market crashed. Same thing in 1973 and, and 69. So what's going on here? And essentially, the reason for that is the Fed goes through these cycles of uh, rate hikes and rate cuts, and they're always late to inflation and they're always late to recession. So what they do, uh, essentially in this chart, what you can see is the Fed funds rate is uh, shown in black and the S&P 500 is shown in red. Uh, whenever there was a recession, the Fed cuts the rates, uh, but they keep it low for a long time uh, until there's this really significant bubble going on in the markets and, and they... they uh, and very late, they realize that they have to hike rates and they begin hiking the rate. But all that does is explodes that bubble and the markets uh, and the economy begin going down. Uh, and that's only when the Fed begins thinking about cutting. So the Fed is actually cutting rate only when there's major signs of trouble ahead. And in this chart, you can see what happened to the stock market after the first rate cut. Uh, each of those gray lines show one uh, instance in which uh, the Fed began a rate cut cycle. And you see some of them uh, really go up, some of them really go down. There is huge variability around it, but on average, it's not uh, positive. And what else we can do is we can look at the median returns, uh, five days, 
10 days, 20 days, six months, one year after the first rate cut. So in this animation, we will see on the left, uh, the median return of the stock market for all days. And then on the right in red, the median return following the Fed cuts in various time windows. So I'll begin with five sessions and you can see uh, actually immediately after the Fed cut, uh, the market appears to experience a short-term boost. So initially the rate cuts are positive for the stock market, but they lose the effect after 60 days and after 120 days turn negative. And after 250 days, we are solidly negative by 13% compared to the median day. But when you look more closely at the data, uh, we actually realize a very interesting pattern. What happens after the rate cut can can be really positive or really negative, but it but there's a, an important variable which is recession determining which way we go. So in, in this analysis, the in periods that we didn't have any recession, actually the market went up after a rate cut, which now uh, you can see that it aligns with our theory. If there's nothing you know, interfering with the economy. Um, the reduction of the Fed funds rate should make investments a lot more attractive. So that that makes sense. But we are, if you're going into the recession, the rate cuts are not going to keep us from crashing. So essentially, this is telling us that the market goes up after the rate cuts only if the Fed is cutting the rate uh, early enough and, and we're not about to enter a recession right after it. But in other cases where we entered recession after the Fed, Fed cut the rate and, and actually the risk of recession was the reason to cut those rates, the market went down and the rate cuts were not bullish. Okay, now that we know that the Fed is cutting rates and, and the effect of that on the stock market depends on whether or not we have recession, uh, the next question is, are we in a recession or, or are we about to get into one? Okay, for that, I, I think the main uh, variable we need to take a look at is the labor market. The last jobs report was really bad. Uh, it was disappointing with only 114,000 new jobs created. The number doesn't seem that that low, but if you look at the trend, it's very concerning. In the past few months, we've had a consistent drop in the number of new jobs created. Uh, and, and this shows a, a concerning rapid reduction and who knows maybe in a few months this will this will hit zero but anyway any which way you look at it and however long of a window you you consider the trend is downward so if we can go back further and you can see if, if you run a regression along these lines you probably get something like this this is a rapid reduction pointing to zero in a few months uh, same thing if you look at a longer window uh, you see the same uh a robust uh, declining pattern. And if you look at more data, the same thing. So this is what really getting the Fed nervous here. Um, we might stabilize at this point, but the trend is actually not our friend right now. And another thing that's uh, that's very worrisome is the rapid rise in unemployment rate. So in the July data, we jumped from 4.1 to 4.3. So 0.2% jump only in one month is, is pretty big considering how, how uh, stable uh, the number has been in recent history. And the pattern we see here is the, the, the unemployment rate went down, stabilized, began an increase. And then right now we are in the phase where we are experiencing a big jump. So that's what really getting the Fed concerned as well. And one of the recession indicators they're using is uh, what's called the SOM rule. And the way it's calculated is by comparing the three month moving average of the unemployment rate to the 12 month history of that metric. So if you're following this metric after it hits 0.5 or more, recession risk is very high. And if you look at the chart of this SOM rule, you see that in July, 2024, we hit 0.53. So the SOM rule was triggered and this metric is flashing recession risks. Of course, this time could be different, but um, nevertheless, this gives us reason to be cautious. Another th way to look at this is uh, by by the tempo of the unemployment rate and comparing it to to the history. So again, uh, this time we had a we are beginning to experience a rapid rise in unem unemployment after a period of plateauing unemployment. Uh, but if you look at history, pretty much every time we had a recession, the same thing happened. For example, in 2008, we had a really good unemployment rate, which you know probably had people thinking we are in a wonderful place. But the unemployment stabilized for some time, 
and then began rising slowly and then began rising rapidly. And that's exactly where we are today. And you look, you can look at the 2000 uh, dot-com bubble, the same pattern, uh, minimum unemployment rate, stable for a while, slow increase and rapid increase and rapid increase. Same thing in the 90s, same thing in the 80s. So you can go back as much as you want and you see the, the same pattern. And that's what's really worrying. So to sum it up, uh, rate cuts are coming. So the Fed has already made the statement and they've made the commitment to cutting the rate. And uh, they might be cutting faster or slower depending on the data, but uh, we have begun the cuts, cutting cycle. Now, the more important question is whether this is actually bullish or bearish. And we just saw that it can go both ways. And what really determines which way we go is the recession likelihood. The best way to gauge recession is through the labor market. So that's what we are watching. And uh, what's important is, is, is to see if whether in the next few months, the downtrend that we've seen in new job creation and on, uh, and the uptrend in unemployment, do they continue to go as they've been doing, which would be very concerning, or somehow we miraculously stabilize and the unemployment doesn't go up further. Uh, but my guess is we don't have an easy time ahead of us. And uh, even though rate cuts might be bullish in the short term, there is significant risk. So be more conservative and be cautious. I hope you like this. I'll see you in the next video.